It's week two of the 2022 season, and we'll be watching the dynamic Tyreek Hill. He made some history last week, passing Flipper Anderson's 1989 mark of 336 yards. It's the Dolphins and the Ravens, and it's coming right up on EA Sports. EA Sports coverage of the NFL on this Friday afternoon brings us to historic Baltimore, Maryland and m and Bank Stadium. Today, after a crazy opening weekend, it's on to week two, and we've got a good one here between the Miami Dolphins and the Baltimore Ravens. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, you look at this Raven team as they get ready here. They come in off a loss in the opener last week, and that one was on the road. Now they get their first taste here of home cooking. And what they're hoping to do is feed off the energy of the home crowd. Great tailgate, great fan support. Let's see if they can put it to good use. Meanwhile, for our visitors, the Dolphins, they were winners last time out, so they'll be looking, Charles, to make it two in a row. And what I enjoyed when I watched their game tape and their victory last week is they put it together in every phase. Good offense. They're obviously in sync with each other, whether it's zone blocking, power running game, no matter what. He understands how to read them and find the creases that they provide. Second down and another run with Edmonds. And so we're into it over. And all the way in for a Miami touchdown. Heck of a start to his season. He had two touchdowns in the opener last week. Another one here in week two. Well, I don't want to call him a touchdown machine this early, but sometimes you get... second quarter. Back-to-back -back sacks have this place in a frenzy as they line up again third and long now. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. He's going to fire one deep over the middle. And that's caught inside the 35. And he will take it in for a Dolphins touchdown. Good start to the season for him. He had the touchdown last week in the opener and a second one in week two now. How about the pace he's already in Seattle, right? Not sure he can keep it up for an entire season, but don't burst the bubble because he thinks that he can. Do guys go into a season with a goal for touchdown scored or yardage? What do you think? I think every single one of the guys who's going to touch the football, they all have those. are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. 
Well, CD, that's his second touchdown already. And how about this offense? Three drives, three touchdowns. An absolute total team effort right now. And let's face it, I don't think he's done. We're still in the first half. There's a lot of time left to go. I don't know what they're going to do on the other side trying to slow him down. But right now, he's feeling it. During that run, an injury here. We got one of those big blockers in some discomfort. The medical staff will attend to him, and we will step aside. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Another carry now for Edmonds. And down he goes at the 45 after a pickup of nine. Good yardage there on first down, exactly what you want. Get yourself set up to keep making first downs, keep the clock running. If they're smart, you're starting to milk the clock. No hurry before you run your second down play. Second down, Gaskin. Able to get the one yard he needed, but nothing more. Second and one, and people want to run the football. This is where every back in the league is supposed to do exactly what we just saw there. Pick up the first down. Couple of first downs to kick off the drive. Here's first and ten up at the 46. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. He's going to rifle one deep left side. That's caught inside the 20. And all the way in for a Miami touchdown. Mike Gesicki, his first touchdown of the new season. And the Dolphins are able to widen their lead here in this first half. And remember, partner, that's a rookie quarterback back there. Apparently, he's getting the hang of this NFL thing pretty quickly. That three touchdown passes. You're right. He looks comfortable. What are they doing? Anything in particular? Well, they keep talking about making sure they're giving him plays that fit his talents and also maybe shrinking the playbook a little bit. They did tell us that. Bottom line, he's really good. Okay, Brandon, we'll get back to you and Charles in a bit. But first, it's time for a trip around the NFL following an eventful opening weekend. 
Let's see what's happening in week two. We'll begin with a couple of cellar dwellers from a season ago. The Jets on the road at Cleveland. And it's the Browns who are out on top. Amari Cooper, a touchdown reception. From there, we head down to the Sunshine State to check on the Jaguars at home in Jacksonville. And you can see there, it's the visiting Colts who have the lead in that one. Two touchdowns there for Jonathan Taylor. Lastly, let's check on one final game for you. And that game all tied with the visiting Patriots. With that, let's take a look at the next-gen stats for Miami in that first half. And a big reason why they have this big lead, the running game. They're over 100 yards as a team, and it's been the catalyst for this offense. Meanwhile, for the Ravens, there's a look at what they were able to do throwing the football. And they'll need to get things in gear as they trail here at the break. He'll drop to throw. A beautiful fake. Nice work to get seven out of that, and it's second down. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. They're going deep for Hill. And this is caught inside the five. It's a big play there for Miami. 66 yards. We saw this plenty last year in college. He loved to take his shots downfield. And that throw, that was a thing to behold there. And he made that look effortless, didn't he? I mean, he's had a great game throwing the football. This is going to add to his yardage total in a big way. It's one thing to be accurate on your short and intermediate throws. But when you're hitting the bombs like those, look out. And the final number on Next Gen Stats, how about this? 71 yards through the air. Edmonds. And a nice move will yield nothing as he stopped behind the line. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big-time play for their defense. And he gets halfway there from the four to the two on a gain of two. A chance to really put this game out of reach. Here's third and goal. They're going to look to throw. And that is caught. Touchdown, Miami. Cedric Wilson, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Dolphins take the opening kickoff of the third quarter and drive right down the field to extend their lead. So I tell you what, Charles, I know that you don't put a ton of stock into power rankings and things of that nature, but another score here. And two weeks into the season this is maybe the most impressive team in the nfl would you agree well they've certainly sold me as they've sold you and i agree with you no question about it against a long pass and when he comes at the quarterback he better get home and make the play otherwise a big play could result for the offense and going deep for Hill this is caught inside the 15 and all the way in for a Miami touchdown Tyreek Hill 78 yards and the Dolphins are able to extend their lead in the final seconds of this third quarter 
Brandon, remind me again. This is a rookie quarterback we're seeing? A rookie indeed. I mean, because my eyes are telling me something I'm having trouble believing. Five touchdown passes. He's thrown five in this game. Are you kidding me? tremendous all day long. The carries like that, that's how they're going to continue to salt this thing away here, Charles, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, how about that? A new set of downs. Clock continues to move. No better way to close out a game than to tap those mastodons you have up. And he's got his tight end, Gesicki, in the end zone. Touchdown, Dolphins. A great play there. Two catches, two touchdowns here so far. And the Dolphins are looking to make it two straight as they add on to this fourth quarter lead. He has really settled in throwing the football, and that touchdown here in the fourth quarter gives him a pretty comfortable cushion. He may be a rookie, but he's playing like fourth quarter and the QB. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive game. Just keep that clock ticking. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine for the 26. He'll look to throw. And he can't escape, and down he goes. Showing off the pass rush skills. Well, it's been a little bit of feast or famine because he's thrown for DC yardage, and obviously they got the lead, Charles, but now he's been sacked four times. And what I'm focusing on is his toughness in the pocket because you mentioned the feast or famine part. He's played well in between being dumped on his back, but every time he's had a chance to throw the football, he's been impressive. And they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. A big play there as they get the conversion on third and 13. Partner, I know we're still in the afternoon slate here. Some primetime games still on the docket, but it's going to be tough to top this effort. What an offensive performance we have seen. They have been unstoppable from the moment we began this game. And they're not holding. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. So the Dolphins have it as we welcome you back in. They've got a second down now as they look to salt this one away. Second and 14 as they've got work to do here after the sack. Someone moved, flag is out. That's going to be five yards. And that will drive coaches crazy. You work all week on dealing with loud crowds, on dealing with motion, and then you have a guy jump. Mike Rimmer's right tackle called for the infraction. And that false start penalty is certainly not helping their cause here. Second down and long. They'll look to throw. They're going deep for Hill. Well, this is taken in. It's complete. And they are going to score again. Yet another touchdown as they just add to their totals. 
Looking like they're well on their way to a 2-0 start. All smiles right now on that sideline, isn't it? As well there should be. It's hard to win a game in the NFL. We hear it all the time. We know that it's difficult. But guess who's smiling? But inside is thinking 24-hour rule because we're going to have to play again next week. Boss man. Oh, without a doubt. The head coach, <laughs> he wants them to feel good, but at the same time, find a way to keep improving. were clicking. Charles, these defenses, meanwhile, have a little something to clean up before their next contest. Yeah, neither end zone had a stop sign in it, did they? I mean, for both sides, visit it, and with frequency. Not fun to be a defensive player, but on the offensive side of the ball, those guys had a blast. One team came away with a victory, even better for them. So for Miami, it was a great all-around performance as they come out of this one with the victory. And they'll head back home next week to take on the Buffalo Bills. Meanwhile, for the Ravens, they'll drop to 0-2. And they'll look to get back in the winning column next week as they head to Foxborough to face off against the New England Patriots. 